one of the most powerful and popular strategies for a financial planner doing tax planning is the Roth conversion. There are strategic, good strategic reasons for doing a Roth conversion. The tax-free growth for life, the fact that there are no required minimum distributions, those are big ones. That, that, that would be a whole other video to talk through the, some of the benefits of doing it and the whys of, of a Roth conversion. Tactically, a Roth conversion is a great way to, at a very granular level, bring income into a tax year. So a, a common use is to fill up a low tax bracket if a, if a client is in a low tax bracket temporarily or for some other reason. So we're going to talk through why or sorry, how we would do a Roth conversion analysis in the system. So first of all, I'm gonna, I've uploaded a tax return and kind of the way we get to here is we've probably looked over the tax return. We've noticed that this particular client is in a low tax bracket. So especially if that's just a temporary thing, maybe it's between retirement and taking social security, that's a great way to harness these years of lower taxes. Now this particular client, I might look at realizing some capital gains because they're in a low enough bracket that capital gains are free, but we're going to look at Roth conversion specifically here. So let's go over to scenario analysis. And really, for any scenario analysis where you're trying to build a case for doing something, where you're trying to demonstrate to yourself and to a client the, a course of action, uh, we believe a good first step is just to create a baseline, which is the, this is what would happen if we didn't do a Roth conversion. So I have a 2018 return in here. Let's copy that forward. We'll make it, we'll be, we're doing 2020 analysis here and we're just gonna call this the baseline. And so what we've started with is essentially a copy of whatever happened in 2018. And we'll have to tweak that you know, if, if something changed with investment returns or, or the, the nature of their wages or something like that. But I'll just work with it being exactly the same. I'm in 2020. Let me close the income section here just so we can see. Just confirm here at the bottom, yes, I'm in the 10% marginal tax bracket. Now, there's something kind of interesting here, which says the next $1,000 I add will be effectively taxed as if I'm paying 15% on that next 1000 So we'll have to come back to that. But yeah, that's the baseline. And so the next one I want to make is a Roth conversion. So let me take scenario two and copy that forward. So copy from scenario two. Here is my Roth, whoops, Roger is my name. I don't want to do that. Roth conversion. So here's my Roth conversion. We actually added a field for Roth conversions. You'll notice when going through our scenario analysis screen that for the most part, we've followed the, the format and order of the fields in a 1040 tax return but we added this box for a Roth conversion, which admittedly, there is a box on, on Form 8606, but we, we stuck it right in here next to the other uh, retirement income uh, fields. So let's say I wanted to do a $10,000 Roth conversion. And if my goal was to try to get me through the 10 or 12% tax bracket, I'd kind of have to go back down, scroll down and check here. And let's see, okay, still in the 10% tax bracket. And that's interesting, the next thousand is it? tax to 10. So one way to do it, and the way a lot of software does it, is you just kind of have to play with the numbers. Keep entering and kind of see, okay, now I'm up in the 12% bracket. Maybe I want to go all the way up through the 12% bracket. We actually added a tool for determining how much you can do to stay in, in, your, in your current bracket. So we have this thing called Solve for Max. I'll go ahead and click on that. And what that's doing is behind the scenes, it's running over and over again uh, the tax calculation. And it's saying, you know what, you can actually add a whole additional 47,500 in or before you hit the next marginal income level. So 47,500, what, what did I have here? So this was 47,500. And you know what, you probably want to be careful about not going over just in case your estimates are wrong. So let's just make this $60,000. And if I scroll down, hooray, I'm still in the 12% bracket. Now, we can actually even go another level deeper. So, but just, just, just to, to stop here for a second, what I've done here is I've showed, I'm showing the client that we can make a $60,000 Roth conversion and we will only generate um, 
about $7,500 extra of taxes because the taxes we've generated through the Roth conversion will all be taxed in the 10 to 12% range, ordinary income bracket. And so if we're making the case of the client, let's fill up these lower brackets, that's what we can show them. Here's the cost in exchange for paying $7,500 today, you've created an asset that is tax-free forever. Now that thing that I did earlier with that solve for max where I was trying to find what was the maximum amount I can do of a Roth conversion before I hit the next bracket? We actually have some additional tools for playing with that some more. So I'm going to I'm going to delete this 60,000 out. And I'm going to click So now actually these two cases are exactly the same. Remember my Roth conversion I copied from the baseline and I put a value in here in this Roth conversion field. I just deleted that out so these are the same. So I'm going to click range calc here. And what range calc does is basically it is running over and over and over again, 350 times, the, the full uh, tax calculation, and each time it adds $1,000 in income. And then it maps out here on this chart what the, essentially what is the extra tax impact of adding $1,000 of income. And there's actually a surprising piece here. This particular client, yes, is in the 10% marginal bracket, but notice that actually, if I were to add $1,000 of income through a Roth conversion, it would effectively create 15.9% extra tax for that client because I'm actually in a range where Social Security is not fully taxed. And so by adding it to AGI or adding to taxable income, I've caused more Social Security to be, to be taxable. So that this is actually pretty useful because if you were just purely going off of the ordinary income brackets, you would have missed this piece right here. But let's say that we can handle that and we want to keep going. So to fill up the 10% bracket, I would do about, it looks like a $12,000 Roth conversion. But if I want to go up through the 12% bracket, which is probably what I would do because that's not very different from 10, I would probably take it out to here, $62,000. Now notice, again, I'm not done with the 12% bracket at that point. To fully fill the 12% bracket, I would have to go all the way up to about $72,000 of Roth conversion. However, in this particular case, this client um, would, adding this much or more ordinary income would cause some of their capital gains to be taxable. And so that's another gotcha. So you, here you are moving along thinking you're still in the 12% ordinary income bracket, which you are, but in fact, within this range, adding another $1,000 of Roth conversion would create would essentially be taxed at what is the equivalent of 27% at the margin. And so what I would do in this case, if I'm doing this Roth conversion analysis for this client, is I'd probably stop right here at about 62,000 before I cause the capital gains to become taxable so right here, I do about 62,000. And you could keep going to the right if for whatever reason, let's say this client, it's a major aberration that they're this low and they're normally in the 35% bracket or something like that. You might continue to go forward. You say, okay, to get them through the 22% bracket, I'd go this far, I keep continuing to the right. So what we recommend generally is to, is to follow this process. So first start off, I'm flipping back to scenario analysis. First start off by, copying forward an existing tax return to create your baseline because that's going to help you kind of explain to the client what's happening with or without the Roth conversion. You copy that baseline forward and then you run this range calc. Remember you click this button range calc and then that's going to tell you visually how much is probably a good amount to do and it depends on the client situation but here I had some good information that said really probably my ideal is $62,000 Roth conversion. And then you can go back and you can plug that in. So 62,000 is what I determined I'm gonna do. Now I can go to my client. I can kind of pretty up this report. I might hide this here so that they just see this. But I can go to my client and say, look, I'm getting you all the way through the 12% bracket. Here's again, here's what you're paying in terms of extra tax. And I have and then separately, that's where you have to make the case to the client about why a Roth conversion is a good idea long term. And that's again, that's probably uh, information that's best shared in, in a separate video. But that what we just walked through is the end to end process of determining whether it makes sense to do a Roth conversion in general 
like are there any gotchas that make it more costly than we expected? And then if in the absence of those, how much would be a good amount to do? And then here's how I present the, the change to my client, the change in their tax bill. Now there's one more gotcha we should talk about specifically for people who are subject to Medicare Part B premiums. So that's gonna be anyone who's over the age of 63 because it is a two year look back. So we should be looking at that when we consider Roth conversion. It's not just the incremental tax cost. We have to watch for the breakpoints on, on Medicare Part B, Part D. Now actually, if you do scroll down to the bottom here, where is it? Here is um, MAGI for Medicare premium increases. And, and so what the scenario analysis screen will show you is at least the Roth conversion that we've done here, that's on the rightmost column here, Yes, the MAGI level is higher, but apparently we're still within the lowest bracket, so there's no additional Part B premium. But what if we wanna find out just where those gotchas are? Now, we, it's the same story. We could play with the numbers and, and test different amounts of Roth conversion. Let's say I up this to 162,000, for example. I'm sure if I go down here, let's see. Uh, yes, now I see uh, 58, dollars of extra Medicare part premium, part B premium. Now there's another way to do that, which is to go back to that range calc screen. Let me, let me delete this out so we can. So now we're looking at what's essentially just the, the same as the base case. I'll click range calc here and it's the same one we saw before, but the system, because it sees this client is over age 63 and you have to enter a birth date for your clients to make sure the system knows how old they are. But you can see these, these uh, dotted lines that show up in this range calc screen. And so what this is telling me is I'm good up until the point of doing a Roth conversion of about $129,000, at which point I have now added $840 per year per person of Medicare Part B. So that's probably a, another kind of gotcha. Like if our plan was to get all the way through the 22% bracket, which is all the way up to here, 163,000, we just have to be ready for the fact that we have crossed this border of a, of a Medicare Part B premium increase. Now, it could be that that's consistent with our plan, in which case we just need to warn the client about it, or it could be that's not consistent with our plan. We didn't want to create that extra cost. And so we'd probably stop here with the Roth conversion. So it's, it's pretty useful once you've entered a birth date for all the taxpayers in the, in the household screen, it's pretty useful to have this extra little guideline to tell you where those breakpoints are. And as you can see, as you go up, they start to increase quite a bit and it can be quite costly as you add more and more uh, to that modified adjusted gross income for purposes of Medicare Part B and D premium increases.